Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Blizzard Fancast, your favorite entertainment day, night, weekday, afternoon, or weekend morning. Welcome back again to all of you that have been listening for a while. Welcome again to all of you that are new. That's a lot of welcomes, but there's the mat. It's all there. I'm back with BJ. I, of course, Taylor, and we are here to talk week three. Most week three. Well, we'll have the additional footage added on. Yes, it is Sunday right now. Taylor was antsy, so we're doing it now. And then we'll have Monday's recap in different clothes. Yes. Because I have thoughts. So He has thoughts. At least one. Let us, in fact, sweep the leg and get this kicked off. Um, Friday, Sioux Falls falling to Massachusetts, 41-49. Um some of my notes here are so Massachusetts was pretty stagnant. Um, they didn't look at all changed from the way that they were last week. It did not look like a big difference. I know they had a buy um, coming up, so it might be a good opportunity for them to take some time off, try and correct course. But they really look like they're playing the same game of football every week. It looks no different. Um, Sioux Falls looks a lot better. That, of course, being in part due to Billy Hall's performance. Chucked the ball around, ran around, one turnover, six touchdowns, no complaints. Um, he cannot, like I said last week with Jerome, um, obviously not perfect, but you can't really ask for any better than six to one. So um, Massachusetts really did run the ball very well with, uh, I believe his name was Hall. Hall is uh, Sioux Falls quarterback. Jimmy Robinson? Yes, Jimmy Robinson. My bad. He only had I know 49 it's for yards. The touchdowns are what matter. Two touchdowns, yeah. So, obviously Five Jimmy catches. Robinson. Yeah, Jimmy Robinson was hitting the ball very well. Um, obviously not a whole lot of yards to see, but the scoring is the important part. That definitely kept Massachusetts in the game with the consistency from him. So, well played by them on that front. Um, but I will say Sioux Falls looks very different and they really did lack turnovers and they controlled that game very well. Unfortunately for them, they lost, but Hey, things are turning around and it's only week two for them. So all power to them. Yeah. Sioux Falls had a great game. Um, they'll continue to improve their own two right now. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know how exactly their schedule looks. I wouldn't be surprised if they're back up to 500 within the next two weeks or next two games. So, yeah, I, I've said this before last week. I'll say it again this week. I don't think Massachusetts is the best team in the league right now, despite their 3-0 record. Every game has been close. Um, that doesn't make them a bad team. I think they're a fantastic team. They just need to. They need to control the games more. Right now, it's been a lot of back and forth, and they just win it in the end, which is great. You want to win. But this is a team that should be winning by 10 to 14 points a game, and they're not. They're making it close. They oh. they took it away in the fourth quarter, but a lot of these games are coming down to the last drive or two, and Massachusetts is going to start losing games if they uh, just lose the time, or the time management battle. So it'll be interesting to see how they play coming up. I do think um, my thing is their control was very good. Granted, keeping it close is fine as long as you win mm -hmm. when you know you're going to win. They control the game just fine. The problem is if you go and look at the stat rundown here, a lot of these points came for Sioux Falls. 12 of those points that kept them close came in the fourth quarter. And the problem being... Massachusetts needs to control the game through the fourth mm -hmm. for either of us to really think they're the best team. It would be one thing if it was one score and you knew they were going to win and it wasn't a problem where they let the other team kind of back into it or played a bad game up until or kind of just stayed in it and then pulled it off. It's just been such a rising and falling bar graph with the way they've been where... They'll control the game early. They'll control the game middle of the way through to the point where they're already ahead by a chunk. Or 
in the case of Sioux Falls at Mass, if they eliminate those 12 points, that's a three-score game. Yep. That's a three-score game. That's 20 points. So I just I don't think you don't let up touchdowns in the fourth. I think it's just the offense has to stay consistent in that fourth quarter. And granted, they're 3-0. and All credit to them. But for me, not necessarily convincing as to being 100% on board, especially with Sioux Falls being a fledgling with a lot of new stuff rotating around. Billy Hall figuring it out. Good for him. So, uh, you know, you cannot ask for more out of a newer QB. You mm-hmm. cannot expect better. Yeah. Let's talk about the Frisco game. Um, I do actually have some thoughts on this now that I was scoring through. Frisco almost lost this game again, surprisingly. Um, yeah, 49-40, Frisco beats Duke City, who uh, struggled a lot last week. Um their quarterback, Javin Kilgo, went for almost 200 yards, five touchdowns through the air, two interceptions, which is probably a big reason why they ended up losing overall. But Frisco's looking like they're struggling, not because they're a bad team, but they're playing down to their opponents right now. You have Tulsa, who, like I said, I've said many times, Tulsa is a great team who is going to figure it out and they could go on a run. But Frisco's just not looking as solid as they did last year. They weren't the team to be scared of like they were last year. So, TJ Edwards only had 57 passing yards, 48 yards rushing, five total touchdowns still. But, I don't know. You just kind of have to think, like, Frisco's beatable. And it's not going to be long until someone knocks them off. And it wouldn't surprise me if they get knocked off by someone surprising and, you know, by multiple scores. So, Frisco's got to just clean it up a little bit. TJ Edwards cannot be throwing for 57 yards and consistently winning games. So I will say that is a lot of credit to their defense and probably their return team during that game. That is not his fault. Yards don't matter. It is scoring True. at the end of the day. So um, as much as I tend to normally agree with you, that's a point where I think I might have to shoot you down. Um, yards are irrelevant if you're scoring and you're not turning the ball over. Fair enough. But We'll see. It won't be long until it might not be uh, starting at the 20 or the 25, and they're going to be starting back at the 5 or the 10. He's not going to be throwing in like he used to. So, I don't know. Three missed field goals doesn't help either, though. So No. Um, Their next game is Quad Cities. So, depending on how Green Bay performs, they do have a bye week this week to recuperate and kind of get back in control. It is yet another home game for Frisco, so they will look to continue the streak and quad cities will look to interrupt so we'll see how they look against green bay this upcoming week but yep. does look to be a challenging game depending on how quad cities looks yeah but all credit to duke city though putting up a convincing game against frisco um i think oh, a yeah. lot of i think both you and i kind of rode off duke city and maybe frisco is struggling but maybe duke city is not as bad as we thought um they put up a convincing game so should they probably have lost by a lot more probably but they played well. I mean, Javin Kilgo, 200 yards, five touchdowns. Just got to work on the interceptions a little bit and could have won this game. So they're 0-2. I don't think they'll stay 0-2. And to piggyback on what you're saying there, to to kind of continue, um, the only issue for Duke City is already being two games in the hole in the most competitive area of indoor football yeah. I would say in the world right now. You have to deal with teams like Vegas who have an explosive offense and a turnover heavy defense. You have to deal with Northern Arizona who controlled well against Tucson, which is a game we'll get to in a minute. But they showed week one they can compete. And obviously Arizona winning was no accident, but Northern Arizona looked like they were going to win that game up until Arizona ran away with it. You have the Panthers, obviously. They just put up a very strong game offensively. And to piggyback again, on top of that, you have to deal with all the other teams. San Antonio hasn't played yet. San Diego just beat you. You have to deal with Tucson, who showed up well. So It's, it's a competitive division, and starting on 2 is not going to be... not going to help you out. At this point... And I, I don't like saying this too early. They might even already be eliminated from playoffs. 
It's at zero and two in the West, I that is a lot of catch up work to do it against teams that are one and one or undefeated. Yep. But with that said, we are going to talk Sugar Skull Wranglers, which is going to be a blast. So we're talking Northern Arizona Tucson, um, one of my favorites this week, just because of the takeaway. Um, with that said, my biggest takeaway is that Northern Arizona's quarterback, Jones, totally different guy, showed up the whole game. Um, not that he didn't do that against Arizona, but I really did think that he led that team, and that is a very important thing to have out of a newer guy. So all the power to him. Northern Arizona deserved that game. Um, they looked to be in control almost the entire game. In spite of it being a little bit back and forth, it almost felt like they were going to win anyways. And, of course, it happened. Um, Tucson looked very good in their opener. It was just a really competitive game to the very finish, and they just happened to be the team that lost. There's no negative. There's no shame in that. It's game one, week three. You're competing against a team that had a convincing game against Arizona, one of the better teams, although as of today, one and two. So um, I, I don't think that Arizona is rated properly. I do think they're underrated. But Arizona competing with Northern, Northern Arizona week one and Tucson doing the same with Northern Arizona it's it's a tough tough call but at your home opener after two weeks and northern arizona comes in that's big yeah by home opener i mean season opener it was not home for them yeah northern arizona put up a game a good game they kind of ran away with it towards the end of the third um a couple bad decisions led to tucson coming back with less than 10 minutes left but they just took it away um the last two drives they scored and yeah, uh, Joshua Jones looks like he's the guy for now. I mean, 19 for 27, 212 yards, five touchdowns, no turnovers. Um, yeah, it was a great game. Isaiah McCorker uh, didn't have two return touchdowns, but he did have two receiving touchdowns. So still looking like a great, fantastic player. Um, but for Tucson's credit, yeah, they, they looked fairly solid for their home opener. Or no, dang it, you got me saying that. For their season yeah. opener. You know, it's week one. Well, it's week one for you guys, right? Other teams have already played two games. Arizona's played uh, Northern Arizona's already played one, and on a bye week, so they're preparing. I don't think there's much better you could do. I mean, obviously taking away this game would have helped, but I think this is kind of what you expected for a team we didn't really know what they were going to look like. Um, yeah, Milik Mitchell. I hope I'm saying that right. He had M I L I K. Uh, yeah, Malik. Malik, yeah. He had 128 yards passing, 98 on the ground, five total touchdowns with four of those coming uh, from rushing touchdowns. So, yeah. I mean, two more rushing touchdowns from Mike Jones. It's just going to be that that one interception kind of hurt and just got to work on your defense a little bit. But I think this team could really stay in contention. Honestly, I think all the teams in the West right now could probably be in contention for a playoff spot. You just got to hope you don't lose the early games and you can stay within that contention. Otherwise, you're going to have teams like Bay Area or Vegas run away with the division. So, Yeah, and um, I think the big thing with that is you look at Arizona's next game, which is San Diego. Um, they don't play Duke City until a little further down the line, but they're 1-1, one 1-2. And one, one and they are beatable and it's yeah. showing and granted both teams that beat them were better teams um but it it's just a matter of weakness and i think lorenzo well sorry we're still talking northern arizona tucson yeah. um if we do want to jump into either of the saturday games we just jump right in arizona go ahead so arizona in bay area for bay area's opener um it looked very empty. It did not look like they filled the stands very well. Um, the area had some issues. And frankly, listening to the Indoor War song all of halftime was miserable. Please, please figure out something better. Um, but the biggest issue for me, I guess, with this game was Lorenzo Brown Jr. 
he's been in the league for a long time. He's one of the most he is actually the most winning quarterback in the league ever. He throws well, but the problem is they're trying to turn him into something he's not. Where he ran ten times today, so ten rushes for a net fourteen yards, eighteen yards gained, four yards lost, net fourteen, averaging less than a yard and a half per carry. Now granted, Bay Area controlled the line of scrimmage the entire game extremely well on both sides of the ball. Pressure all over Brown, gave Daquan Neal all day, and it showed. Granted, the result doesn't show that necessarily it being that close, but Lorenzo Brown Jr. is not in Sioux Falls anymore, and they expect him to play like a Western QB. And unfortunately, he might not be built for it, but... With that said, Arizona has a lot to look forward to. Uh, Dalton Sneed possibly coming back sometime soon. Um, expecting, you know, Brown to be in there for a little bit, being a short-term QB. The issues are now, not later. So Sneed looked great in the opener. If they can get him back soon, problems fixed. But unfortunately, Lorenzo Brown Jr. is not Dalton Sneed. Um, Bay Area did have the better game overall, but they just made some costly risk assessment where they took some risks they didn't need to, and especially like that onside kick before halftime that gave Arizona the tying score. No point. Arizona did the same thing and let Bay Area score off of it. It was unwise, frankly. They did not learn from the mistake of their opponent, and they decided to try and take advantage of it, and it backfired. And that is truly what I think kept the game as close as it was. Especially with such little time left, you kick that thing straight back. There have been about 30 seconds left. I don't remember how many timeouts Arizona had, but you have to control tempo and you have to know better than onside kicking because Arizona will punish you for mistakes. Yeah. And even though Bay Area did control the majority of that game, Arizona did a great job staying in contention. They hung in there fought hard it just came down to whoever turned the ball over first and it happened to be Arizona unfortunately for uh Arizona but it was back and forth pretty much all the way up until the third quarter where up until the third quarter where uh towards the end tie game um obviously with Bay Area scoring 20 points and Arizona only scoring seven that's not a recipe to win but the big shift was the turnover to Bay Area inside the red zone for the Rattlers and from there it was pretty much over you knew uh, Arizona was not going to win that game yeah and it, I mean it still came down to the last couple of plays and it was a great game overall but I think you're right yeah Bay Area really held a, held on to this game um, showed why they're the number one spot in the coaches poll I don't know if I agree with that completely, but they look like a very solid team. Um, Arizona's still decent, despite their 1-2 record. Um, they'll be back. It's Arizona. Every year, they just... They'll be back. So, yeah. I don't have a lot more to say about that. You did... It was a great summary. Yeah. Um, so... On to the final game for now, um, Jacksonville, Vegas, Sin City on Easter. So my biggest takeaway for this game is penalties at the correct and incorrect time. The biggest issue here is Jerome Johnson gave himself up clearly on the ground and a Sharks player came in and hit him well after the play. It did look like he re-injured his knee and his backup, Mancuso, came in. Um, other than his fumble, played well, but you could just tell that it was not Jerome's offense, and that is why the scoreboard reflects a close game. Um, but if you watched that game, you would know it was not close at any point. Vegas pretty much had Jacksonville by the skull, and I, they just had no response. Jacksonville's execution was far off the mark, turnovers, uh, penalties, just goofy things that set them back, frankly. Their quarterback had a couple of questionable plays where he could have run it in, could have thrown it out, but 
it just he got dominated. Uh, the defense looked insane. Of course, Vegas's defense is very turnover heavy so far this year. They get a lot of ints and fumble recoveries in two games, so uh, it just seemed like Jacksonville had no chance through the entire game, no matter how close it looked at any point. There was no hope for Jacksonville in my mind. Um, unfortunately for Bay, or I'm sorry, Vegas, um, the referees decided to protect Connor Blount like they were the Secret Service. So uh, they called a roughing the passer that was maybe half a second after he released the ball, and the blitzing middle linebacker did not hit him very hard, if at all. Um, they called that for 15. They called a, um, I'm sorry, a late hit on their quarterback, so Connor Blunt, on the ground where he was hit. And granted, it was a late hit, but it was very disheartening to see them call that um, and not call that for Jerome because that could be his season. We don't know right now. And that's the sad part is we won't know for a while. So you got to protect both guys equally at the end of the day. I will criticize referees when they're wrong and safety is a priority. That is very unfair. And it reflects, especially with the third call I'm about to bring up, where a Sharks receiver went up to get the ball. Vegas defender hit him pretty hard. I don't remember the specifics, but they called a necessary roughness. And Vegas's guy had no clue he didn't catch it. Jacksonville's guy came down, was on the ground, it did not look like a dirty hit. It looked very clean, and it looked disruptive, and that was another 15 yards. So, unfortunately, Vegas pays dearly for things that were just coincidental, and the referees really did not do a very good job of protecting Jerome, for one, and for two, they did way too much keeping Jacksonville in this game, unfortunately. I don't know. I watched the first half and I didn't see a lot of those issues. Um, from what it sounds like, a lot of those were in the second half, unfortunately. Yep. Um, uh, third and fourth quarter. Yeah. But yeah, the Vegas defense did look fantastic, um, at least in that first half. Uh, if you look at their total, the total overall uh, stat categories, yeah, they had two interceptions against Blount. He threw two again, just like he did last week against Mass. They held the rushing game to 37 yards on 19 attempts. So, averaging under two yards a carry uh, for that defense is pretty stellar. Um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of Jacksonville's offense is a lot pass heavy, but he's just got to figure out those turnovers. Uh, two interceptions loses you games, and it was a what, final score nine point game, six point game. Sorry, six point game. Yeah, six-point game, so any one of those drives turns into points, you have a win. And like you said, probably a lot of it was due to referees, Jerome getting injured. This could have been a, or should have been a farther game than it was, but yeah. I will also say, um, up until Mancuso's fumble, he looked great, no problems. Um, obviously, the fumble being a little bit of an outlier, but he seemed to have picked up similarly to where Jerome left off. But I do disagree. I do believe if Jacksonville would have truly been in this game, Vegas's offense would have come right back out and taken risks. Um, the only reason for the fumble, I do believe one of the defensive linemen for Jacksonville came off the line and kind of caught him in a weird spot and just slapped the ball out from behind while he had him held. Nothing is a quarterback you can do there, um, especially on a scripted run play. So... Is it his fault? Absolutely not. I do think if Jacksonville had been more competitive through those last couple minutes, yes. But it was kind of garbage time by that point because of how far ahead Vegas already was. Yeah, like you said, it didn't end up mattering. Um, Vegas was up, what, 12 before the injury? So, 13. They were up 32 to 19. Um, Jacksonville ended up bringing it back to 33 to 39. So they just kind of ran out of time. The two interceptions hurt, of course, but Jacksonville's just got to stop turning over the ball. I mean, you're looking at averaging two interceptions a game for Blount. You can't be doing that. 
in this game. It's a very, especially with a defense that can't back it up. Yeah, it this whole league has always been whoever gets the first turnover or wins the turnover battle is most likely going to win these games. So, two picks yeah. to a fumble. Yeah. My biggest issue with Vegas's coaching in this game is too conservative. You see, they were up thirteen points, um, and you know they they won by six. They could have gone for two points twice, and even if they went fifty percent, they still would have been up that extra point and would have forced Jacksonville to have kicked a field goal just to tie. I'm sorry, a PAT to tie. So. That is truly my only nitpick. If your offense is doing as well as it is and not turning the ball over, put them out there for two. I mean, if your kicker isn't going to go for the deuce, and I respect that, um, a kicker knowing his limits is a good kicker, truly. But even if you go 50% there, you're up seven by the end of the game. There's really no downside. Yeah, I mean, they just got to figure out their system, and I think that system is going to change with Jerome being out. We haven't seen Mancuso play at all. Um, that was was the projected starter uh, last week. Um, but he went two for three today with the fumble, 19 yards. He didn't play a lot of the game. So, I mean, we don't really know how well he'll how well that'll translate over into next week if Jerome is out. Um, but, yeah, as of date, uh, Vegas does have a bye week after this. So, hopefully, Jerome, it's not a serious injury, hopefully, and they, he'll be back to face the gunslingers on April 12th. So, yeah. Um, I don't have anything else for these games. Do you? Uh, hmm. I guess the only real conclusion I have is every game this week so far has been a scores difference. And every single time you have seen what that scores difference looks like, whether it's something like Northern Arizona, where they control the game all the way through, whether it's Massachusetts, where Sioux Falls has a chance to get into it, or Jacksonville, where the referees kind of help them out a little bit. All credit to their team for taking advantage of it and capitalizing. Um, you know, Bay Area leading most of the game and then going down and their defense figuring it out, stealing the ball, and Bay Area just controlling it for the rest of the game. It's very different one-score game wins, even though they are very ticky-tacky differences. It's all, although score similar, different from a strength of victory standpoint. Mm-hmm. It was all good games, too. It wasn't any 100%. of these games that I wasn't thoroughly entertained during. Um, unfortunately, I did have this last say... half of these last two games, but yeah. The Sorry, only one that maybe fell a little bit short was Frisco. Um, I hate to say it, but even with Duke City getting close, we knew they weren't going to win, unfortunately. It was a lot closer than we thought, though. Um, a lot closer than it probably yeah. should have been in Frisco fans' eyes, but I, they just did not seem like they were going to win that game at yeah, any sure. point. Did not exhibit, hey, we're going to take a lead, or hey, we're going to get a turnover and take a lead. Just never happened. That's true. So, uh, other than that, I have nothing else. Um, again, we will continue to harp on this announcement for you guys. Uh, we'll probably do the outro next video, but yeah, let's get right into San Antonio, San Diego. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Blizzard Fancast. It's I, Arnold Schwarzenegger. No. Of oh, course, it's future Taylor and BJ back for part. 1.2.3 or whatever it's like one and a quarter one um quarter. as you can see we are iced out completely differently than yesterday i look homeless and bj's wearing a sweater so that doesn't say wisconsin yep. anyways let's talk san antonio against san diego yeah um pretty decent game i watched a good majority of it um Final score was 69 to 61, San Diego. Um, it was that closer than that. It was 63 to 61 with two seconds left in the game. So there was no defense in this game for either team. 
I'll just put it like that. Uh, each team had one stop or one turnover on downs. And that's it. San Antonio held San Diego to a field goal at one point, and that's it. So, it was a lot of back and forth, a lot of poor kicking from both sides, um, a lot of missed PATs. So, I mean, it was a very good offensive battle. San Antonio really looked like they knew how to score, which is good for a brand new team, better than Jacksonville's been looking so far. (laughs) And, Brand new team, air yeah. quotes. New team to the league compared to the other said new team to the league. There uh, you go. Yeah. But defense is not existent. San Antonio had no secondary. Uh, I believe San Diego had three drives that were scored, scored a touchdown in one play and had one drive where they scored in two plays. So, yeah, defense was non-existent. Uh, there was some questionable decision making in terms of kicking. A lot of attempts at a deuce that were missed. So short fields for San Diego. Uh, I believe the final uh, squib kick at the end of the game was a bad decision. They should have just kicked it deep. But it was just a lot of a lot of back and forth. It was a really close game. It was a really solid game. High scoring game of the season so far. And uh yeah, I don't really have a lot more than that. San Diego looked fairly solid. Nate Davis had nine passing touchdowns, 200 and something yards. So he'll be... San Diego's a contender. Um, I think this game really showed it as long as they can work on their defense. They played a great defensive outing against Duke City, but not in this game. So I think that goes for San Antonio as well. They just got to tune their defense a little bit, and they could be another force that might not be stopped. So... Yeah, no turnovers from either team. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good game to watch. Uh, I was watching it with Ralph and a couple of their other commentator guys. So shout out all of y'all. It was a great watch. Shout out um, to Ralph. You know what? Shout out to Ralph. Get Ralph that guy. That guy deserves a cookie and a milkshake and all of the cheese curds I can possibly mail him across the north-south line. So, I mean, bummer that San Antonio lost. I We both had San Antonio winning this game. Um, so, I think they'll do well next week. Uh, it's just adjustments. That's all it comes down to. It was their first game played. So, not much you could well, do when it's your first game playing of the season. Most teams look pretty bad their first week, and they look pretty competent offensively. Defensively, left a lot to be desired, but, you know, it's, it's week one for them. Really, it is. So, just got to improve. We'll see how they adjust. Um, same as San Diego. They look pretty solid offensively. Just got to work on that defense. And Honestly, the, every single team in the West looks like they could easily even take the first spot, honestly. Maybe not Duke City, but they could easily make a playoff spot. So, I don't know. We'll see how it... Uh, Shakes out as the season continues. I don't think there's a bad team in the entire league right now, but I could go on a side tangent about that. So Iowa, Iowa. They've played Jacksonville, one game. Jacksonville, Jacksonville. Fraudulent territory alert. Win well, a game or remain. It's it's like I said, it's week two. A lot of these teams have only played one or two games. Mass is the only team who's played three, and I think they're overrated. So. It's going to be a fun year of football. I honestly think this is going to be the most balanced year out of every year that I've seen in this league. So it wouldn't surprise me if almost every team has five plus wins compared to the last couple of years where we have one or two win teams. Mm -hmm. Um, For game one, you and I will not be watching any of these except for the one we are at in Molina, Illinois, Quad City, Green Bay. Always a good game. It's never too far apart for either team to be within shooting distance. Personally, I'm really excited to be on a road trip, honestly. The game is kind of secondary, so um, with that said, let us jump right into the first game, and in my opinion, the most obvious game, um, or least obvious game to call, that is Northern Arizona at San Antonio. Um, 
excuse me. So I'm sorry, did I mix that up? I think San Antonio is home. Yeah, it's in San Antonio. Okay. So San Antonio being the home team, uh, very strong offensive showing and defense has little to work on from what I heard. Offensive line had a little to work on. I watched some of the game. It looked like NAL football. It looked like exactly how San Antonio wants to introduce themselves. And for all intensive purposes, this is not a pun. They came out guns blazing Mm -hmm. and their quarterback showed everybody what he's made of. Northern Arizona, on the other hand, showed us that their defense is quality. Granted, 48 points isn't great, but it's not 69 points, <laughs> or I should say, what, 62, 63? 63. Don't count that last one. That's not on the defense, but 63. Jones has been great. He's picked right up. McCorker's been helping a lot with that, I think, because he's forcing defenses to focus on him. Um, but yeah, I, I have Northern Arizona winning this game just because their defense is stronger and it just doesn't seem like San Antonio is able to really protect that ass. Yeah, I have San Antonio winning this, uh, but I like you said, I think this could really go either way. Uh, I think being at home is really going to help. Uh, it's brand new turf, which will always be nice. But San Antonio is going to keep scoring. Uh, it'll see if Northern Arizona's defense can stop them. But from what we saw today, what I saw today, they're just going to keep whittling and diming downfield. Um, Northern Arizona's really going to have to lock in. And if they do, and they can force a turnover or two, I, I think they win this game. I don't think San Antonio is really going to be able to fix all of their defensive issues in one week, especially on a shorter week. You're going from a Monday game to a Saturday game. So you're going to have five days, five, six days to turn this defense into giving up 63 points to giving up hopefully 30 to 40 and forcing turnovers. I don't see it totally changing. It's going to come down to whoever can get over the, whoever can get the most turnovers, whoever can get the most stops is going to win this game. Um, Yeah. I'm Cause I don't think I'm going to disagree very slightly. Okay. I think it's going to be whose offense is more efficient. Or, in other terms, uh, to, to agree with you as well, whose defense is more efficient. Yeah. It is it is going to be a defensive game. And make no mistake, all credit to an offense if they score a lot, but it is going to be entirely reliant on whose defense stops whose offense the most. So, yep. yeah, with that said, that's our picks for that one. Um, for the most obvious game of the year, literally, it could not be any easier... Bay Area taking on Jacksonville. Jacksonville being at home. At Bay Area against Arizona was the best game of football all year, and it came down to the wire. Best game of football I have seen out of the IFL in at least three years. And obviously that excludes playoffs just because I'm a baseball fan. I watch baseball during that time, so no hate, but... Bay Area looked very strong. They controlled the line of scrimmage, which is something that Jacksonville has had a very hard time doing. Connor Blount struggling with turnovers left and right. I mean, two picks a game on average so far. It's two games in. If you're not changing things and you look like the same stagnant team, you're not going to win games. And unfortunately for them, the referees aren't going to save you every time. They're not going to put you within striking distance. And I mean that sincerely. I mean, no disrespect toward Jacksonville. The referees are not going to put you within striking distance every time. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get a miracle like Jerome getting injured and their backup fumbling every game or them stalling out because it's not their starter. It's not going to happen every week. So Bay Area looks incredible. Their offense looked great. Um my biggest takeaway about that game, uh, in terms of positive for Bay Area, Bay Area has some of the best running backs, some of the best linemen, both sides of the ball, and one of the best quarterbacks. I mean, Daquan Neal did not miss a beat in that game. There was not one play where I said, you know what? I'd rather have somebody else. Nope. All the way. Bay Area got him over Jacksonville here. 
yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you there. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the lines are. Uh, they'll probably be out within the next couple of days. But Barry's going to run away with this game. No hate towards Jacksonville. I think they'll figure it out midseason, but they really got a really tough schedule, especially to start the year. Uh, Massachusetts and then Vegas showing up, and now Bay Area, your defending champs. It's a tough start to the season. They'll probably start 3-0. and They have a bye week, uh, week five, and then they play Vegas again. So I think the real test of their season is going to be most likely 0-3 coming out of a bye week to face Vegas at home. If you lose Again, that game, I think season over. It, it's going to be a wrap on the season cuz you just have harder yeah. and harder teams. You have Arizona yet, you have uh, Arizona twice actually. You have Sioux Falls twice, you have Frisco yet. Even Massachusetts again and they it gets easier. You play Iowa a couple times, you play Iowa once, you play us twice. No offense to us. We'll see how we look in July and June, but it's going to be a tough struggle for Jacksonville. They really got a tough schedule, and their team doesn't really look like they're up for the challenge yet. It's going to be don't coming look out. Like the male sharks. That's yeah. the problem. So we'll see. San I think. Antonio. Go ahead. I, yeah, I th- I think they'll lose this game. I I don't doubt that it'll be a good game to watch. I think Jacksonville will probably kind of keep it close until the fourth quarter, but you're saying no? Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll bite until the fourth quarter. Yeah. I think it'll be at least a decent game to watch, um, but ultimately I don't think they're going to come out with this. But we'll see how they look after the bye week. I think that's going to be their biggest test is that week six Vegas game. And if they don't show up for that, it's going to be tough to think of them as a contender so yeah. starting 0-4 even 0-3 in this league is a death sentence most likely so we'll there see are they... only 16 games and unless yeah. you win out you're not doing anything significant unfortunately yeah so yep that is my th- our thoughts let's go on to another really questionable game and I really don't know where to go either way in this game Tucson at Duke City so here's my thing Frisco's defense has looked shaky at best all season. They get the turnovers. It helps their offense. They don't stop the scores. And that's the difference between a good defense and a functional defense. Every single team that's played Frisco has been in it since week one. Frisco has made themselves very beatable by having a defense like that. I think Duke City's play was great. But, you know bypassing touchdowns to interceptions against a you know and no discredit to Frisco's defense a functional defense let's call it what it is it's not a bad defense it works it does its job it makes sure the offense gets on the field Duke Skiddy scored a lot and that is the difference between you know week one Duke City playing San Diego and being held to under 21 and Duke City week two playing Frisco and putting up the points that they did which for those of you who did not get to see that game 40 they dropped a 40 piece on Frisco with two turnovers they were within nine points that represents a good game to me but Mm -hmm. it's Tucson Tucson's offense in one game has shown me two things. In spite of Tucson, sorry, in spite of two, in spite of Tucson's defense not necessarily slowing down Northern Arizona enough, Tucson's offense is good, good, not top tier, but a good offense. Their defense just happened to get hit with some really up and down plays where they get some stops, things will go the other way. I do have Tucson winning this game, but that is because I know how Tucson functions. I've seen us play Tucson, Green Bay that is. I have seen Tucson play outside just in watching games. That is an organization that wins. I have not seen Duke City convince me that they will be relevant just yet. 
just yet. They're close. They're not quite there. 40 points on Frisco is a big step. You got to start winning now if you want to convince me, though. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, Tucson showed that they're, you know, contenders, right? They've only, they've played one game. They lost to Northern Arizona by six. And that's a Northern Arizona team who's had two weeks to prepare for this game. They just came off an Arizona loss. And to come within that close of a team who's already played, already played against a great team and still put up good numbers on your first game, I think that really shows Tucson's going to be around. I think the entire West, honestly, will be. Um, I think Duke City's going to figure it out. But I think Tucson takes away this game. Duke City will fall to 0-2, 0-3. 0-3. Yeah. Um, yeah. They'll be 0-3. They'll be in but... the same... They'll be in kind of a weird position if we get these picks correct, where <laughs> I, I don't count them out because they're... A team that if, in my mind, you switch them into the East, they'd be competitive. They have the disadvantage of being in the West, whereas Jacksonville has the disadvantage of a Western schedule while being in a slightly less... I shouldn't even say slightly. It's a less competitive East. You you know two of those teams right now, Frisco and Massachusetts, right them in for the playoffs... Onto the next two teams that might make it. Yeah, but. I I really agree with you. I think the East is a easy division, and yeah, if Duke City was in the East, I think they probably take that second or third spot. But it'll suck for them that they're in the West because they might start Owen. Well, they're Owen two right now. They might start Owen three, and that's not good for being in the West. But I really think that. Just a couple of little changes in Duke City could be could be a contender who might make a run and could win a couple, you know, six, seven games in a row and put themselves right back in playoff talks. So I don't know. I think I think it's early yet. Um but Duke City looks solid. I think Tucson will probably take this away. But I don't know. This is a game that could really be a coin flip for me. I could see Duke City showing up and really showing why they're a contender. I could see Tucson just doing what they did last week and putting up good numbers. So I'm having Tucson as well, but this is a game I could really see going either way pretty easily. Yeah. Well, let's get on to the game we will be at. And for some of you who listen to this, you will be seeing us there, seeing us around there. Green Bay traveling to Moline, Illinois to play with Steam Wheelers. So you've got your Ash Wabanon Blizzard playing against the Moline Steam Wheelers, which, great April Fool's post. Both sides of that. Magnificent. Um, yeah. I think Green Bay has the benefit of a bye week after a messy couple of first weeks. Um, they should be 2-0. I'm not going to get hung up on it because what's done is done. Mm -hmm. It's been a rough couple of first weeks. And I think that's the best case scenario for the start to a season, to be one and one. And granted, I give a lot of credit to Massachusetts for being 3-0, and but that doesn't set you up to learn because you're not failing. And we talked about this in the recap. Massachusetts has not learned from their mistakes. Sioux Falls nearly crept into that game and won. Jacksonville stayed present in that game and got no intentional disrespect. They got beat badly by Vegas, and the scoreboard lies. Do not let that thing fool you. They were beat the entire game. And Massachusetts does not look strong. Green Bay has an opportunity to say we're 1-1. One and one. We are in the four spot right now. Granted, it's early. It's two out of 16. I understand. We're at 500. This is other than 2-0. and oh, I, you know, where we want to be. It's so much better than 0-2. There's hope. We've won our game. We play that team two more times. They did not look good necessarily against us. Their coach consistently wanted the referee to call things left and right. 
it just seemed like they were very frustrated. So I think Iowa might be that team where it's, hey, expect a win, but don't get carried away or they'll beat you. But Green Bay has the benefit of having two games, while Quad Cities only has one game so far. Against the struggling Sioux Falls, I don't think, personally, that Quad Cities is ready. I don't think they're ready for Green Bay. I, I think, granted, they have the benefit of an off week, too. Some time off to think, to prep, to prepare. There's more film for Green Bay by far. They did not have a strong game against Sioux Falls. Granted, Green Bay didn't against Iowa either, but their defense sure did. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if your offense struggles, a good defense is going to back that up. We talked a lot about how they tend to flip-flop between offense firing off or defense firing off, or kind of like a 50-50 split between what comes up well and what doesn't. I just think this is the time that Green Bay is going to truly clock in, figure it out, and impress. If there's a time to do it, it's game three against Quad City. Yeah, you got to do it now. Um, you got to show up, especially after, you know, you lost that game to Massachusetts that you should have won. Iowa should have been a lot more of a statement than it was. Our defense looked fantastic that fourth quarter, actually the whole second half. Um, but yeah, you just need to make that adjustment, right? Quad Cities played a brand new Sioux Falls team. Billy Hall looked bad in the first game, looked fantastic their second week. If that Sioux Falls team shows up during that week one game, Quad Cities is losing by 14 or 20 points, right? Sioux Falls really learned from their mistakes and I think are a better team than they looked in the first week, right? So, Quad Cities is going to have to make some adjustments and they don't really have any experience. You know, like you said, they don't have the mistakes made yet. Like you said for Massachusetts. They struggled against Sioux Falls, but they should have taken that game away a lot more, right? They were poised to go up 17 nothing until the pick six, and that really turned the tides. So, I don't know. Last time we played them in Moline, uh, we started the game 14 nothing, right? Within the first two minutes on two back-to-back -back terrible plays, we were down 14 nothing, and we still scraped our way back to a close game. So, I mean, in the end, we ended up losing, but there's a lot of ifs because against Quad Cities, right? We haven't beaten them since 2019 in Quad Cities, but I think Green Bay needs to win this game. Right, Green Bay needs to show up and say, hey, we're a contender, even if it is against Quad Cities, who might not be the best team in the East, but did at least look decent enough in their first game. So, Green Bay needs to win this game. If Quad Cities wins this game and goes 2-0, and I think that's really going to hurt Green Bay. Obviously, they have a bye week the following week, but then you play Sioux Falls, who's going to be coming off of a couple good games, and... It's going to start writing how your season's going to go, right? So you need to win this game, go into the bye week on a high note, and then look to Sioux Falls in week seven. So week six, sorry. Yeah. I think I we think both have... Difference... Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, you're good. Um, I think the big difference between this game and last year's game is this is not Quad City yet. This is... Illinois indoor team right now. This is not last year's Quad City. It's not to say they don't have the potential to be good. It's just to say that they are not the Quad Cities to be feared that they were. Mm -hmm. They are a far cry from last year's team. And with good coaching, they could be that team. Our team has retention at quarterback, and that is so much more important than... Granted, they put up a decent game. They got to be happy with their win. But Green Bay off a of bye week, I mean, two games, 
they've made their mistakes. It's it's time to put the big white pants on, go out and hit them over the head with the baseball bat at this point. Yep. Your defense clocks in the first half and stays consistent. We run away with this game. I think our offense with a little bit better play calling, you know, you figured out what does and doesn't work from the last two weeks. I think we we run away with this game if our defense locks in. Which our defense played fantastic the first or the second half of last week. So just gotta take it from there, right? Work on a little bit of the offense play calling. I think our offense looks great with the right plays. Um, I think a lot of our offensive issues have been play calling issues, not player issues. So a couple better play calls. Our defense just staying staying locked in, I think. Green Bay's got a great chance to win this game. I have them winning. So, yeah. All right. On to the final Saturday gauntlet game. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I want to talk about this real quick. Five Saturday games, all within an hour of of each other, is ridiculous as a football fan. Like, if I'm a football fan who's not going to a game, sure. Watching five games all at the same time isn't the worst way to spend a Saturday night, but... At the same time, spread these games out, man. You could have had two Friday, two Saturday, one Sunday. I know it's arena availability, but five Saturday games. If I'm a home team fan like Quad Cities or Jacksonville, I'm not watching four of the games of football. I'm missing the entire week of football. So for our job is going to be a lot harder next week to do a recap when we're at a game and there's four of the games. We're going to have to go back and watch all these games on live. So... On our Sunday. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, unfortunate planning, right? Like, it's just arena availability and whatnot. But five games in one night is, and that's the only games this week, is kind of kind of ridiculous. But continuing on to the Iowa at Tulsa game. The Poop Bowl. So, excuse me. I only call it the Poop Bowl because... They both have a weird yellow color scheme. Um, I don't and hate it. I just think it's going to be very funny to mix them both up throughout the course of the game because it's going to happen. Yeah, you're going to be having Iowa in white and then Tulsa being their black, black and yellow versus white and yellow. But they were also the two worst teams in the league last year. So it'll be also interesting almost to see. Beat Frisco. Tulsa almost, Tulsa almost beat Frisco, and Iowa got beat by Green Bay. Both Tulsa's teams are going to win this game. <laughs> Both teams are coming off a bye week. Um, yeah, Tulsa's going to win this game. Iowa's going to have to make some major improvements after that Green Bay game. Tulsa just needs to tune up a little bit off that Frisco game, I think. I think they're going to run away with this. Tulsa's got a solid defense. Excellent offense. Just got to tune it up a bit, right? A couple plays go their way against Frisco, and like last year, a couple plays go their way, and they're a winning team. So I was going to have to make major adjustments after the Green Bay game. Like you said, there was a lot of frustration from Iowa as a whole. That's the thing you only see if you're like at the game versus watching it on TV. Especially but, front row. Yeah. You get to see that frustration really happening. So, I was going to have to make some major adjustments if they wanted in this game. I don't think it's going to come this week. I think they could probably pull out a couple nice sneaky wins later in the season, but... It's not now. It's not now, yeah. They'll, they'll fall to 0-2. I could be wrong, but I think Tulsa is a better team than this. They'll get their first win this week especially at home in front of their huge crowds usually. So, yeah, it should be it should be a good game to watch, but I think Tulsa is going to win this game at least by 10 if not more. So, Tulsa having the benefit of some late season uh, shenanigans there. Um, they play a lot of eastern teams, which is definitely an easier schedule. A lot of them getting back on their feet after being, you know, hey, we have one of the best quarterbacks in football. We are a consistently competitive team that's won a ton of championships in Sioux Falls. Iowa, always competitive. Never counted out until 
this and last year from what it looks like. Quad Cities taking a step back from what they were. I mean, they are not the Quad Cities of the last two years. The Sharks joining in and going 0-2 right away. Green Bay sitting at 500. The Pirates and Frisco being as far ahead as they are. That gives you an opportunity, no matter who you are and no matter how many games you've lost. 0-3, you can still make playoffs. It's feasible. It's not too far to the realm of possibility. I don't think Tulsa is going to fall 0-3, though. I don't think so either. I'm yeah. I'm just giving the hypothetical in that situation, but yeah. For for the time being, they will be sitting at 500 by the end of this week. Pretty much stamp guarantee it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Iowa could compete with Frisco even remotely. So Tulsa did that. That's something not a lot of teams can say they've done in the last couple of years. So all power to Tulsa. Um, hopefully they get back into it. You know, 0-1 is not a bad way to start the season, really, as we know. But Yeah. Yeah, yeah they'll bounce to 1-1. Uh, but I, I think Iowa's... Honestly, Iowa got a tough schedule to start off the year. Just looking real quick. They played us, obviously, lost. Off a of bye week, now they have to go to Tulsa. And then they have to go to Massachusetts. And then Arizona comes to town. And for their home opener against Arizona in Week 6. Which, as a Iowa fan, oof. Waiting till week six to watch your team at home. That's ridiculous. And against Arizona. That's going to be a rough, rough four games. I don't think I was going to be able to come back from 0 and 4. And that, and then they have to no. come back to us. So their next bye week is until week 13. They play us twice in there. They play Massachusetts twice in there. They play Sioux Falls once, Quad Cities twice. I wouldn't be surprised if Iowa ends up at. Winless one in ten by that bye week. Two and I, ten. Sorry, yeah, two I will and ten say, or something like that by the time that bye week comes out. And no hit against I Iowa. It's just a tough no. schedule. But they it's, they got to make their adjustments and not a lot of time to do it. Yeah, I think it's not going to happen in one, two, three weeks for them. It's going to be a very slow burn. And like I said, every team that has been consistently good has fallen a long ways from grace. Uh, even Frisco, yeah, I would that, argue, their defense. That's the biggest thing to me right now is if you, let's just talk about the East, right? Frisco is not the team they were last year, right? They've played two games. That first game against Green Bay last year really set the tone for Frisco's season, right? And you look at their schedule these last two games, and they're, they're close games against decent enough teams, but teams that they should have beaten, right? Like Duke City was line was at 16 and a half points. They should have covered that spread easily, and they didn't. And the fact that they didn't is wild to me. I'm not saying Duke City's a bad team, but really, Frisco's got to show that they're a powerhouse, and they have not shown that yet. Their defense They'll... hasn't. Yeah, right. And I don't know. There's just... There's a lot to be desired from Frisco. From a Frisco fan, I'm happy that they're 2 and 0, but it's I'm not just comfortable. Not, yeah, it's not the same spark they had last year, right? I will say they have a fairly relatively easier schedule, but I don't know. They'll probably end up taking a playoff spot, but I wouldn't be confident come playoff season against other contenders. Massachusetts is a beatable team. They're sitting 3-0 and right now. I think they're a very beatable team. I think it's a matter of time until they start dropping games, like you said, because they haven't had that chance to experience it. They're on a bye week, then they face Iowa. They will most likely go 4-0. and I don't know. I. It feels like Massachusetts is due for a loss streak coming up. I don't know if it'll happen just based on their schedule, but... I don't know. I think the East is very... It's going to be a back-and-forth division. But I think the West is, too. I think every team this year is very decent. Besides maybe Iowa, honestly. No offense to Iowa. They played one game. They lost by six. 
I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. This league, the league this year as a whole looks incredibly well balanced. There's been no team that I feel could crush any other team any week. Maybe Vegas. Maybe Vegas. They, Bay Area they looks, really do look bulletproof. Vegas looks solid. Bay Area looks really good from their one game against Arizona. Arizona already looks decent. Even though they're one and two, I think Arizona is a very solid team still. But I don't know. It, it'll be a fun season overall. I think this season is going to have a lot of really good games. This honestly might be one of the best seasons of IFL football I've ever seen as a whole. Because I don't think there's going to be any team under five wins. Maybe Iowa, but I think Iowa might. Uh, I think Iowa could figure it out. You never know. Taylor says no. I think Iowa could pull off at least four or five wins if they make their adjustments. They played one game against a kind of struggling Green Bay. They lost by six. They looked a lot worse than the final score shows, but you never know. I think this is going to year is going to be a great year of football. Even if 15 out of the 16 teams are better than 5 and 11, I think that's a really good thing for the entire league as a whole. So, do you want to know Iowa's gauntlet here? <laughs> yes, Iowa's gauntlet is ridiculous. I mean, you're looking at Green Bay first, Tulsa Bay next, us. Massachusetts next, home opener Arizona, Green Bay away, Quad Cities at home, Massachusetts again. Quad Cities in Quad City. Green Bay makes a little visit. June 1st, Sioux Falls in Sioux Falls. Quad then City you get a bye again. week. And then like, Quad Cities, then Tulsa, then Arizona. I Jacksonville might maybe, have it figured it out by then. At this point, the only teams I could really see them competing with or even close to beating, Jacksonville, Tulsa, Quad Cities. But maybe us, depending if we start looking like our normal selves, but or the I shouldn't I don't think we should say normal selves, just <laughs> what we are used to previous seeing as fans. Years. Previous years. Yeah. Our previous year selves, but even if I say that, we, we swept them last year. And none of the games were really that close. So I guess I even shouldn't say that. But I don't know. Tulsa's got a tough schedule or not Tulsa. Iowa's got a tough schedule. It'll be interesting to, interesting to see how they do. I mean, it's not like they have bad players, right? You have Darius James Pearson, who's a decent enough quarterback. You have Gabriel Ree, who can kick really well. You have Tyrell Pearson coming back, who's a great corner. But you don't have the home field advantage at all until week four. You're playing away at sense. teams that crowd in Green Bay on youth jersey night. Crowded, sold-out arena. As close as it's going to get. Tulsa is a massive. giant crowd. Arizona, Massachusetts is always loud. Arizona will probably have fixed their attendance numbers by the time week six rolls around. So, I don't know. It'll be... I haven't really got I mean, screwed over. Arizona year, is their but... home opener, so... Oh, you're right. My bad. Well, they do play They're... Arizona away, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's three very passionate loud opening day, or I, I shouldn't say opening day, but opening stretch games that just don't look winnable, unfortunately for Iowa. Granted, I want everything to be competitive. I don't like blowouts. I don't like seeing teams lose a ton. That's not fun for anybody, especially the Iowa fans. They don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. As somebody who has watched the Blizzard suck at points, Over my last year, million, decades. <laughs> I understand how that feels. And I don't want Iowa to be bad. It's just being realistic. Are yeah. they going to beat Tulsa? Probably not. Are they going to beat Massachusetts? Probably not. Are they going to beat Arizona? Probably not. Could they beat Green Bay? Sure. Could they Depends beat Quad Green Cities? Shows up. Shit. Could they we'll beat see what Quad, Quad Cities? Cities looks like. Honestly, we were writing off Duke City last week, and then they showed up against Frisco. So maybe Iowa shows up against Tulsa and wows everybody, and now we're talking Iowa in playoff talks. But for right now, in the one game that we've seen, 
I don't see it. I don't see the spark that they could find. Nothing has changed. They got to make some major adjustments. And going into Tulsa, who's coming off that Frisco loss. Yeah, Frisco loss. With just a couple adjustments they need to make, I think, I really think Tulsa is going to run away with this game. I don't see Iowa coming that close to Frisco. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it should be a good week of football. Let me rephrase that. It should be a good day of football. But, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. To be fair, um, think about it like this, folks. Uh, as, as negative as it is for those of us who like watching it live, there might be a silver lining in that you've essentially got five DVR games and you can watch one of them or two of them at once. Mm-hmm. And watch a couple on Sunday. I mean, the games are resolved. Just don't check the scores. Yeah. Watch the games. Enjoy them. You can enjoy them whenever you want, but if obviously not ideal. Yeah. If there's a game to watch Saturday, watch that Northern Arizona-San Antonio game. I think that one's going to be probably the best game to watch this week. Not right off Green Bay, but I think if you're looking for a decent, great game to watch, Northern Arizona-San Antonio is going to be a fun game to watch. So... Tucson Duke City is going to be my game for this week. Um, that's another game where we really didn't have a clear pick, but we have to because that's our job. <laughs> There's no clear winner there. I, Tucson seems like they'll win, but Duke City know. could too. Duke City almost so, beat Frisco. And if you're giving you them go. as much credit as you give Tulsa for be, almost being Frisco, so. <laughs> I like Duke City, but the difference is the turnovers. Um, Duke City having two against Frisco, and we can look at the sheet here. Tulsa being within six, and uh, one turnover. One interception. Yeah, one one interception. We don't have fumble stats, but one interception. I just checked, no fumbles. Thank you. One interception. Against and that was at the end two of the game. ANTs. Yeah, garbage so. time. I shouldn't say garbage time, but like... No, it was in overtime. Hail Mary. In overtime. And... That was the overtime. They need to score to win. Well, stay in it. Stay in it, and they threw a pick. So Yeah. So that's the only negative I really have. Um, or I guess difference between Tulsa and Duke City is Tulsa was more convincing. Tulsa didn't have two interceptions. And the fact that Duke City stayed within nine and the fact that Tulsa stayed within six, that extra turnover puts you down three more. Mm -hmm. That lack of an extra turnover keeps you within six. So with all that said, folks, please, 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 please have a good rest of your week. Um, Keep an eye out for Saturday. Lots of football. Yep. Um, Approach it pessimistic, optimistic, silver lining, however you would like. Either way. Kind of wrong on the league for putting five games down on one day, but um, at all the end of the day... Games. It'd be different if there was a Friday or a Sunday game, but all five games... At least games. put it up a little bit. Yeah. But with that said, um, that's the predictions. That's the recap. Um, let us know if you liked the format, if you thought we could change anything. Granted, future us are insanely tired by the end of this. At least <laughs> I am, so... <laughs> If I said anything that sounded nonsensical, please cut me some slack. It is almost three in the morning and I'm tired. So with that said, I'm going to bring my last bit of energy for this outro just for you guys. So you better subscribe, <laughs> leave a comment at least. I mean, just even if it's just high, but literally lowercase high, do that. Um, thank you all so much for listening. Thanks for giving us your time, patience, and your leisure. As always, keep an eye on the forecast, Quad City, because there is a blizzard on the way.